Welcome to Delta Cast Tutorials. Today I'm going to be doing a short leg cast, and our goal with this is the patient has an injury to their ankle, uh, maybe to their midfoot, but we're going to make sure that the patient is in a neutral position, and uh, we're going to be using a foot stand. This is a device that helps place the foot in the proper position, but it's the one that's underutilized that people do not like using because you have to take it off at a certain time. Routinely, maybe the patient can keep their position, but if they are weak or there's so much pain, you have to learn how to use this unless you have an assistant. Of course, this needs to be cleaned off, and there's a little dial to tighten the height of it on, and every now and then you may have some of these in your clinic where they're off center, uh, meaning they rock a little bit. So you have to maintain your foot on this once you get the patient in position because any movement jerk that is gonna be very painful for the patient. So when we get ready to put this on the patient, we wanna make sure that this portion of their foot, you're not gonna put the foot stand around the first toe. You're not gonna put it directly in the middle because it's gonna bowl the foot. So we wanna put it not so far lateral because then we have that foot everted. So we wanna put it mid lateral, okay? Now the patient is in a lot of pain, so I'm not gonna be grabbing the patient like that. So let's show how we would do it. Go ahead and lift your leg up. Okay. And let's put some stocking head on first. And there's two different ways to apply the stocking head with the foot stand. I'm gonna show one way to apply the foot stand with stocking head on. If the patient is in a lot of pain, you might have to put your hand through the stocking head, grab their foot and slide the stocking head up the extremity. We are going to stop the cast at the web on the dorsal side, just below the web space of the toes. And then on the plantar aspect, we're going to stop it at the ball of the foot and have a sunrise look around the foot. So it's nice and contoured, leaving the fifth toe open so that they can articulate their toe. If that is enclosed, you might have to cut that out with the cast saw because that can be very irritating to the patient. So here we go and put the stocking head on. The goal is to get around this area that's gonna be really painful. So I just do that really nice and easy. And just like any fold when they've been at 90 degrees, cause that's the position the patient will be in, we're gonna cut out the extra material there. We have the patella here, the tibia tuberosity here, and that's where you can feel the little uh, bouncing of the tendon there. Here's the tibia tuberosity. That is where we'll stop our cast the little bony prominence there. If you see I don't feel it, then run your hand up the anterior aspect of the tibia and you'll feel a little prominence there. That's where we'll stop at one finger's breadth or two fingers breadth below that bony prominence. Then on the lateral side of the leg is the fibula notch. And that's gonna be a little bit higher. We do not wanna put our short leg cast there, stop it there, cause there's a, a nerve there that's a little bit more prominent and that can cause a little bit uncomfortable feeling for the patient. So we wanna make sure we don't stop the cast there either. And as we go down, we look at the malleoli, uh, the bony promises of the ankle to ensure that we pad those up well. And we're gonna expose the fifth and first toe for better movement of their toes. So let's position the patient on the foot stand. And it's not gonna be the most comfortable position for the patient. So we really want to get them where they need to be and then leave them there. So right now, I'm trying to get the patient at a neutral position. And so what I'll do is, and you can see where the toes of the patient, we want to make sure that the bar that's here is not sticking out, number one. And then we're going to put it mid-lateral up just past the fourth toe. Okay, we don't have that over there. And then we want to line up the patella with the first toe to make sure that their foot is not going out or going in. All right, so then all this extra material here, we're gonna cut that out. And now I'll place my foot on this just to make sure that it doesn't move too much or skirt from underneath and cause a lot of problems. So let's go ahead and cut this out or you can put a little slit in it and just overlap it on itself. Some people put the uh, foot stand inside of the stockinette so the patient can have a better grip. I like to put it on the outside of the stockinette so it'd be easy to slip out, okay? Because I'm gonna put padding on top of the extremity so it'll slip out of that area pretty well. 
So we have the patient in the right position, and I'll look from the side to make sure that they are, and if anything, we want the knee a little bit more towards me, so if I need to do that, I'll tell the patient to slide up toward me just a tad. All right, and then I'll verify if I did too much and where, where we need to be. So I'll start my padding a little bit past the toes on the base of them so I can know where to cut back. Figure eight around the ankle. Do a 50-50 coverage as I go up the cylinder-like portion of the extremity. Okay, grab some more padding. I want my padding at least a quarter of an inch past where my cast tape will go. So here's the tibia tuberosity of the patient. So I'm gonna put it directly on top of the tibia tuberosity. So I'll know one finger's breadth or two finger's breadth below that is where my cast needs to stop. And again, we don't want it so high up in the back of the leg that it irritates the back of the legs. Now what I wanna do is just look it all over make sure I cut it, covered it adequately. And if I feel like, especially the ankle bones are a little bit more property, I can use some adhesive foam. And just place it on that bony prominence. Throw some gloves on. Now we're ready to go. Reposition the patient one more time. Again, we wanna make sure that the knee is in line with the first or second toe and that the patient still is in a neutral position. I'm using Delta Cast Elite. It's gonna have the rate of lucency so you can check for the bony anatomy healing and it's gonna be still light and somewhat conformable where it's stretched just a little bit and it has the strength of fiberglass. So I'm using three inch, you can use a four inch, whatever size you like, but try to use for lower extremities, three inch and four inch for adult patients. So now I'm gonna just dip the cast tip in some water. Bring this bucket just a little bit closer to me. And I'm putting the cast tip a little bit further than what I need it to be because I'll cut it away. Keep the roll kind of close to the extremity and it will let you know where it needs to go and it, you won't over pull it. So I'm going up the extremity, doing a 50-50 coverage in a spiral-like form or pattern. Remember your anatomy check there, that's where we're gonna stop our cast. Try to always end your cast tape on wet cast tape so that it adheres a little bit better as you apply the cast tape. Laminate for a good three to four seconds to make sure things are lying down. Get your next roll. You probably will need three to four rolls now, depending if this is a walking cast or weight-bearing cast, you may need to have a little bit more strength. Now, the big thing about that is the patient's compliance with it. if it's non-weight-bearing, is it strong enough for them to cheat? And what happens with that is they may try to walk on it accidentally and they'll crack it. So I'm gonna do a reinforcement on the backside of the cast without making the cast extra thick, totally circumferential. Now look how I'm going up the extremity. I'm holding the roll and giving the roll to my other hand as I go up or more proximal. Next, I'm gonna just pull down the top portion of the cast and you see all this extra padding there? Now I'll have a padded edge so that the patient will be a little bit more comfortable. Then I'll work my way back down with the extra And hopefully you can see this, this is just an extra fold. So lay that down, don't pull it so hard because it'll recoil and then you start to fight with it.
nice padded edge. So what I'll do is cut on the sides of the cast near the toes. And then what I'll do is palpate and find out where the fifth toe is all the way to the first toe. And then I'll just cut this portion off. Now, the patient didn't even know this, but they'll start to want to look at what you're doing. So they'll try to open their leg up, move their leg around. So you have to be really conscious of that because it is interesting what I do. So we want to make sure that we take the patient off the foot stand, but make sure the position is right first. So I took care of the top portion, slide that out. Now I'll take away that space that that foot stand left in there. So I'll just rub it from the bottom, take away all that space. And that's important that we make a nice little impression in there, especially if they have pest planus, pest cavus, meaning the foot is flat or high arch. We take away all that space so it can be actually conforming to their foot. Now what I want you to do is kind of hold your leg up for me. And now what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and cut this area away. Let me use this just for a second. And then I'll just put the foot on there and I'll contour this to the bottom of their foot or the sunrise portion of the ball of their foot. Cut the padding on the sides, so I can pull it back a little bit easier. And look at that, we have nice exposure all the way to the fifth to the first toe. Now what we wanna do is just check for any padding that you may need. If you do need some padding around the edge, go ahead and add it now if you want to, because then you don't have to cut the cast up a little bit just to replace it. Okay, so now I'm gonna add a little bit more padding to that area, because I feel like it's fine, but maybe I need a little bit more. So what you can do is just roll some out. And go ahead and lift your leg up just a little bit higher. And then I'll just put that there. Go ahead and stuff that in there. You can use your scissors or you can use your hand. And then what I'll do is just cut off all the extra. This will not be seen, but it will definitely need it. So now I have a nice little padded edge. Now let's continue on with something where it's called a reinforcement layers. Okay, now the reason why I'm saying that is we can actually make the cast a lot stronger because the patient needs to be resting. And what I mean by that, they need to have their foot higher than their heart. Sometimes they put it on hard surfaces and crack the heel and, or they try to walk to the, you know, try to get quickly to the bathroom without wearing some type of cast shoe and they'll crack the cast and then the patient comes in a little bit earlier than needed and you have to redo the whole cast. So what we're gonna do is just go ahead and add a reinforcement layer. So all it is simple to do, all you need to do is just get a roll of cast tape and depends on how many layers you want. I'm gonna do three. This way, the reinforcement or the strength of the cast is on the posterior aspect, but it's not totally circumferential, meaning it's not going to be extra thick throughout the whole cast, making it harder for the clinician to take it off. So I have that like that. That's my little three layer fan fold. I got an X row here and some more over there. And now what I'll do is just dip this in the water and I'm gonna place it on the edge of the cast. And I can put this as tight as I want because the cast is already set underneath. 
and then I'll just slowly incorporate it in. Even if I have wrinkles, that doesn't even matter because the layers underneath it are already set. So now all we need to do is cover this up and then add another layer just to finish the cosmetic portion of the cast. I don't think I can finish it with the leftover I have here. I'll always end your cast tape on wet cast tape. Again, when we had to use that foot stand, we try to make sure that the knee was in line or the patella was in line with the first toe and second toe so they don't have any external or internal rotation. Again, that was a short leg cast using Delta Cast Elite. Hopefully there was helpful steps, a little uh, pearls that can help you. Thank you. If you need any additional support or training regarding Delta Cast products, contact your local rep or look for us on www.sd.com.